Hagerstown, Maryland played a vital role during World War II by building modern training aircraft for American, British, and Canadian fighter pilots. That history is housed at the regional airport. I spoke to the co-founder and curator of the Hagerstown Aviation Museum about the past 100 years of the Hub City's love affair with airplanes. How did Hagerstown become such a hub for aviation and one of the largest aircraft manufacturers back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s? It was a kind of happenstance, I would say. Officials at Maryland Press Steel hired Italian aircraft designer Giuseppe Bellanca to help them break into the aviation business. Uh, he came, designed uh, what, they, what was considered the Model CD. This is a rare photo of the first and only Model CD built by Bellanca. When it was finished, it was taken to a grass airstrip across Wilson Boulevard from the current site of South Hagerstown High for a test flight. All Belanca aircraft made in Hagerstown were built by employees at the Pope Bicycle and Automobile Factory on Pope Avenue. When World War I ended, sales of aeroplanes, as they were called, nosedived, and Belanca went bankrupt. But one of his employees teamed up with a local shoe manufacturer and together formed the Kreider Reisner Aircraft Company. Together, Ammon Kreider and Louis Reisner designed a plane that won two trophies at the Philadelphia Air Races in 1926. Um, it got them some real notoriety, so they decided to build an airplane for the sport pilot of that time, which was becoming more popular. This, is this it behind us? This is it, yep. The Kreider Reisner uh, C2, or what it became later known as the KR-31. This is one of the sport airplanes that was actually built downtown, right? Tell me about this sport airplane. What, what could it do? Aerobatics? Um, it could do some aerobatics, not, not uh, what well, you would be considered today really ex exceptional aerobatics. Kreider Reisner built their first airplane in a garage nicknamed the Little Green Shed. A year before the Great Depression sent the nation's economy into a tailspin in 1929, the company was sold to industrialist Sherman Fairchild, who built a big factory on Pennsylvania Avenue in Hagerstown, where Fairchild built his first airplane. Fairchild Aviation managed to survive the Great Depression and began building airplanes again in 1931. When Germany invaded Poland in 1939, a modern monoplane was needed to replace biplanes that were being used to train American, Canadian, and British fighter pilots. During World War I, the war to end all wars, that plane was the PT-19. This was a an economic boon for this town because a lot of people were hired here. How many people actually worked at Fairchild Aviation? Um, it, it got to a number of 8,000 during World War II, uh, by the end of World War II, and in, by the early 1950s it was up over 10,000. Hagerstown was the perfect place to build airplanes. This historic footage shows Hagerstown had a workforce of skilled craftsmen in furniture and manufacturing who didn't need additional training. Aircraft built at plant number one on Pennsylvania Avenue in Hagerstown were towed out to the airport and flight tested. Fairchild hired a local pilot to flight test its aircraft. Richard Henson, who preferred to be called Dick, operated a very successful flying service in Hagerstown in the 1930s. While Germany was invading Poland and other countries in Europe, Henson was here in America competing for a contract that would put Hagerstown on the world map when it came to aviation. In competition at the U.S. Army Air Corps testing facility in Dayton, Ohio, Henson won his company an initial contract for 270 PT-19s. Fairchild Aviation expanded its operations when it got government contracts to build almost 7,000 PT-19 trainers. Dick Henson left Fairchild in the 1960s formed HAG, the Henson Air Group, and later bought WHAG, a TV station in Hagerstown that eventually became WDVM 25. It was going bankrupt and likely to go dark, and he just firmly believed that this great community that he lived in uh, deserved to have a television station. Hugh Breslin, hired as a salesman, retired as the general manager of that station.